back to your seats and actually take a seat. Um, I remember this from one week last year, Estrella. I did, a, I did my crowd surfing and during that song. I thought about it again. They told me not to do it. So, All right. Hey, here, here's what I want to do real quick. Um, I want us to, to scooch in. So if you're on these outside wings, I want you guys to scoot in a little bit. Let's fill up these first three before we, we do this, all right? So if you're over here, I want you to get up. I want you to scoot over, scoot in. Thank you for throwing out, yeah, scoot in. All you guys scoot in. It's so, so good to see everyone this evening. All 
All right, hey, um, if you guys could just give me give me your attention just for a second. A um, couple, couple of things real quick uh, we, we want to do. Hey, if, if you're here tonight and we haven't had a chance to meet, my name is JJ. I'm uh, the student pastor here at Westside, and I'm just so glad that you came and that you're here with us. If this is your first time you're a guest with us, we're just so grateful that you would be here with us tonight. Our hope is that maybe, just maybe tonight, you would have, meet some really cool people, you get to have some fun, that you would encounter Jesus, um, and that maybe you, you would come back next week. One of the things, one of the things that we're about here at Westside is this idea of building relationships. We, we believe in the power of community. And so like if you're new or if you've been coming for a while, I, I want you to, to realize how amazing it is that we get to do what we get to do week in and week out, that we get to gather together as believers and worship Jesus together. And we get to talk about his word and community. And so one of the things that we did at the beginning of this semester is we, we came out to you as, as students and our leaders and we said, hey, we want to try something out um, for a semester. And, and so what we've been doing is we've been doing our community groups before we've been having our services. And so we said, hey, at the end of the semester, we're going to take a time and we are going to evaluate that. Um, about four weeks ago, um, our, our student team, we began just to pray and begin to evaluate, begin to ask some questions. We, we asked a lot of our students, we asked our leaders. And so we, we felt like at this moment, it would be really good for us to kind of make a midstream pivot. And so here, here's what I want you guys to know. I want you to come next week because we're gonna kick off with worship and a message, and then we're gonna get into our groups together starting next Wednesday night. We're still going to dig into God's word using the Discovery Bible method, but we want you to show up expectant. Speaking of expectations, can I just ask you a question tonight? I've been asking our team this today. I've been asking our leaders this today. What are you expecting God to do tonight? Teenagers, what, what are you expecting God to do in your life today? Now let me ask you a, another question. What would happen if God actually did what you expected him to do tonight? What would, ha would your life be completely different? Would the world look a little bit different because you expected God to do something big in your life? Here's the reality, and here's what I know about every single one of you in this room right now. We all came in with something. And there's some of us that, for whatever reason, we don't believe that maybe God can, can change that thing that's within us. There's some of us that, that we believe maybe uh, that, that we've asked God to take something away in our life, and, and he just hasn't done it yet. What if tonight's the night? Here's the beauty of our God. Our God is this big God. He created everything. But the Bible tells us in the book of James that if we would draw near to him, he would draw near to us, meaning he isn't just this big, distant God. He's a personal God who wants to come close to you tonight. So what if in your heart tonight, when we stand up and worship and open up his word, what if tonight you expected him to meet you where you are? What if tonight you expected him to show up in your life and to change that thing that you didn't think that he could change? What if tonight you said, hey God, like I really just need to know that you're there. And he showed that he was there. What if tonight was the night that changed your world forever? Here's what I believe. I believe that God wants to change some people's lives tonight, but he's not going to force himself into your life. He's just waiting for you just to come to him tonight. So when we stand up and we, we continue to worship, when we open up the word, when we worship at the end, I just wanna challenge you to go after the presence of God because the presence of God is in this place. And so would you just, would you just pray with me real quick? Let's just begin to expect God to do something big in us today. Just in your heart, I'm not gonna pray out loud just yet, just in your heart, what are you expecting God to do in you? God, we're drawing near to you right now. You are a faithful God. So I believe right now that you're drawing near to us, and we thank you and we praise you. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. I want you guys to stay where you're at, and I want you to stand, and let's continue to worship Jesus together. Confess 
confess that I'm far from missing these shackles I wear I bought on my own Scarlet sin had a crimson cost That's an amazing promise because of what Jesus did on that cross and his death 
burial and resurrection we can thank God that he rolled that stone away and what that means is whoever puts their faith in Jesus have eternal life so uh, what an amazing opportunity we had tonight to put our faith in Jesus to trust Jesus and to follow him with everything we have who's with me tonight come on we're gonna follow Jesus through every valley through all the things that are happening around us and in this world we don't have to worry we don't have to fear because the Lord goes before us he's around us and he's calling us into this amazing beautiful life welcome again go ahead and find your seat to close your eyes, like seriously, close your eyes right now, and I don't want you to open your eyes until I tell you to open your eyes. I'm going to ask you a series of questions, and if your answer to this question is yes, I, I simply just want you to raise your hand up. So in the last 30 days, how many of you with a show of hands have felt stressed out? Okay, you can put your hands down. In the last 30 days, how many of you have felt anxious? All right, put your hands down. How many of you in the last 30 days have felt overwhelmed? All right, put your hands down. How many of you in the last 30 days have felt angry? Okay. How many of you in the last 30 days have felt burned out? All right, one, one more. Keep your eyes closed, no one looking around. How many of you wish that there was a different way of living where you didn't have to feel stressed, anxious, overwhelmed, angry, or burned out? How many of you wish there was a different way? All right, you can put your hands down. You can look up here at me. Um, here, here's what I want to say to you. Thank you so much for being honest. Because here's what I want you to know. I want you to know that there is actually a different way of living where you do not have to feel the pressure and the stresses of the world, where you do not have to feel like you're always anxious or feel overwhelmed or angry. In fact, Jesus would tell us this in Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 through 30. Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion, come to me, get away with me, and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Jesus promises that if we will come to him, we will recover our life. Jesus gives us a promise that if we will come to him, we will learn how to take a real rest. Jesus promises us that if we will simply come to him, that we will learn the unforced rhythms of grace Jesus gives us this promise that if we will come to him, we will live a life that is free and a life that is light. Question. How many of you, with a show of hands, want that for your life? Okay, I want you to keep your hand up. Because here's my second question for you if your hand's raised then what's keeping you from coming to Jesus? Put your hands down. What's keeping you from taking Jesus up on his offer to receive the life that he wants for you and the life 
that you want. Because here is the truth. Jesus is still in the business of inviting people like you and people like me simply just to come to him. And when we come to him, he fulfills his promise and we receive this life, the life that he wants for us and the life that ultimately we want for ourselves. But here's the thing. We have to slow down and come to Jesus. Uh, Let me say that again so we can let that sink in tonight. If you really want the life that Jesus has to offer, you have to slow down and come to Jesus. But here's the question. Why do we need to do that? We need to do that because our life looks a lot like this vase. And I really want you to be able to see this this evening. So I want to invite my, my friend Kai out with, who's one of our camera men, to, to get up and close. So if you're sitting back, you can see this. Because like I just said, th- this is a representation of our life. And each and every single day, what we do is we fill our lives up with small choices and big choices. We, we fill our life up with small choices like, what am I going to wear? What am I going to eat? What time am I going to wake up? And what we do is, is we literally fill up our lives with these things. But then we have big things, big choices that we make, like the friends that we're going to hang out with, the people that we're going to date, the college that we're going to attend to. So we've we got to fit that into our lives, right? So we put that in there. And then we have the biggest rock of them all because the most important choice or the most important thing about you is your relationship with God. But what a a lot of people do is is they just try to fit God into their lives. And so they'll do something like this. I'll I'll get all of this stuff and, and then I'll fit God in here. But God doesn't really fit into our lives, right, when we kind of do it like this, correct? So, so here's what a lot of us do. We just put Jesus to the side. And, and we come to Jesus when we need something. We come to Jesus when, when we want something from him or when we go through something hard. And the problem with this is that when we live our life this way, it leads to a life of chaos. And it leads to a life of chaos because we're carrying around the weight of the world all by ourselves. And there's so many of us in here today that this is what our life looks like. We, we, we say we love Jesus, we show up to church, we do the things of Jesus, but Jesus isn't a part of our life. We put him down on the table somewhere and we're carrying so much of the pain and the hurt and the worries of this world and expecting it to change. So why do we need this? We need this because the invitation of Jesus is to slow down and just come to him. In other words, the invitation of Jesus in Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30 is for us to literally prioritize Jesus over everything else. And so what we do each and every single day when we wake up is we prioritize him and we put him in first where he belongs. And then, yeah, we still have other decisions to make. We still have big choices that we need to make, and we, and we can make those choices. And, and the other beautiful thing is this, is that all those other small choices that we have, they fit, right? Somewhat. But hey, for the sake of the illustration, there's some choices that you're making that are small that you don't need to be making. So let's just leave those out of our lives. Sorry, that one's for free tonight just because that did not work how I thought it was going to work. And it worked during the practice, but it didn't work tonight, all right? Like, oh. Can I tell you this real quick? This is the life that Jesus intends for you to live. This is the life, and yeah, you still have to pick up and carry the weight of your choices and the weight of of everything else in your life, But, but the beautiful thing is this is that when you do this, the promise of Jesus in Matthew 28, uh, 11, 28 through 30 is that you are not carrying this alone. 
In other translations, he uses the word yoke. You're yoking yourself to Jesus. In other words, you're doing life with Jesus. So we simply need to take Jesus up on his offer and the thing that we need to do to receive the life that he wants for us, the life that we want, we need to slow down. And we need to come to Jesus. But here's the question. What does that even look like? What does that look like? It looks a lot like what happened one day when my daughter Ella interrupted me while I was spending time with Jesus. You see, um, I make it a priority every single day to try to wake up before my wife and kids so that I can spend some uninterrupted time in prayer and opening up God's word. But, but on this particular day that I'm talking about, I, I remember um, I woke up and I was like, my wife and my kids are both awake already. And so I went downstairs and I uh, grabbed some coffee, I grabbed my Bible, I grabbed my journal, I told Becca and, and my kids, I said, hey, I'm going to go upstairs and I'm going to spend some time with Jesus. About 10 minutes or 15 minutes passed and I felt this little finger on my shoulder doing this. And I looked down and it was my daughter, Ella. And I, I called her Missy, so I said, yes, Missy? She said, Dad, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but could we snuggle? I was like, no. No, I was just joking. I, 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 I looked down at her and I said, I said, I said, yes, come on up. And that girl in that moment jumped up with me and I put down everything that I was doing in that moment and she put her head on my, my chest and we just sit there and we snuggled for about 15 minutes, and it hit me. This is what it looks like for us to come to Jesus, to slow down and simply come to Jesus. Because the crazy thing is, my daughter, in this moment, she needed to brush her teeth, she needed to fix her hair, she needed to get dressed because we needed to go to school that day. But in that moment, None of that mattered. Why? Because I was simply spending time with my daughter. So what does it look like for us to slow down and come to Jesus? It looks like us coming to Jesus and doing one of these. And Jesus looking down at us and saying yes. And us looking in the face of Jesus, even though we can't see him, and saying, can we just spend some time together? And hearing our Savior who's trying to do so much and who's holding the entire world in his hands and together say, yes, let's spend some time together. And, and here's the thing. Look, look, look up at me real quick. Here, here, here's the thing. Here's what you'll discover when you do this. What you'll discover is that when you get into a habit of tapping Jesus on the shoulder and, and asking him just to spend time with you, you'll discover that the thing that Jesus wants from you isn't something that he wants from you. The thing that Jesus wants from you is just you. Now, get, let me get really specific for a second. Jesus doesn't just want part of you. The thing that Jesus wants from you is, is all of you. He wants the good. He wants the bad. He wants the ugly parts of you. He wants every single bit of you. Jesus wants all of your past mistakes. Jesus wants all of your current struggles. Jesus wants all of the futuristic things that you're going to do to blow it. He wants all of you. And I wish that some of you could just get that. He doesn't need your religious activity. He doesn't need you to read your Bible. He just wants you. He wants to do an intimate relationship with his son and his daughter. So this week, can I just invite you to do something I, I, I've been doing? And the thing I've been doing is, is every morning, I've been waking up before I, I spend some time with Jesus, I just tap myself on the shoulder as a symbol, 
Jesus, I'm tapping you on the shoulder. And then I just say this right here. Jesus, can we spend some time together? Here's, here's what I want us to do this week. I'm just being simple. Here, this, it's a simple invitation. Is would you join me in tapping Jesus on the shoulder and just asking Jesus to spend time with you? And, and here's the reason why I, I, w- I want you to, to try this out with me. It isn't that, that we, we really need something or, or that we want something. It, it, it's, it's this. I asked a series of questions tonight for a reason. A, I thought I already knew what was going to happen. I was, I was pretty, as I was writing this message, I, I, I knew that there was going to be hands all over this. And if I'm just really honest with you, if I'm just really honest with you, my, my heart breaks that so many of you are feeling the pressure and the weight of this world right now. And my prayer for you, our prayer for us, has simply been, hey, hey, Jesus, could you just give them peace tonight? And, and students, you need to hear me when I say this because I love you, and, and the reason why I'm about to say this may seem a little bit hard for you to hear, Peace is not going to be found in the things of this world. Peace can only be found in the presence of Jesus. And the beautiful thing about the infinite availability of Jesus is that he is available to you whenever you want to meet him. But you have to come to him and you have to tap him on the shoulder. And when you tap Jesus on the shoulder, I promise you his word is true. I said it earlier in James. It says draw near to him and he will draw near to you. If you want to receive the life where you can recover not just what your life should look like, but what the biblical life for your life should look like, the life to the full, a Greek word, zoe, it means life abundantly. That's the type of life that God wants you to live, and it's it's the life that I hope that many of you will begin to live, because listen, I get it. This world's hard. I get it, there's a lot of pressure on you as teenagers. I get it. You're dealing with things that I never had to deal with. But can I tell you this? Jesus dealt with everything that you're dealing with on the cross and he offers you peace tonight, but you have to tap him on the shoulder and say, Jesus, will you spend some time with me? Christians, the ones of you who claim to to be Christians, Maybe just maybe you need to stop masking your relationship with Jesus by going to 15 different church services in a week and you just need to come to Jesus and just be his. Maybe you need to stop giving your faith off of 15,000 different podcasts and you just need to come and be his because listen, you, you, you might be like a mile wide but you're an inch deep and Jesus wants to take you deeper. You gotta come to him all of you who are weary and heavy laden, and he will give you rest. Would you just tap Jesus on the shoulder because Jesus is in this place tonight and he wants to meet with you. But here's the reality. I need to be honest with some of you tonight. There's some of you here tonight, the reason why you're not doing this is not because you, 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 you don't love Jesus or that you know about Jesus, but it's simply because you have never received what Jesus has done for you. And here's what I believe right now. I believe that Jesus is in this room and I believe that he is walking amongst us and I believe what Jesus is doing right now to some of you is he's tapping you on the shoulder. He's tapping you on the shoulder and he's saying, would you come into a relationship with me? And all you have to do to receive that is just say yes. So right now in your hearts, begin to say yes. Say yes to Jesus. Don't wait. Today is the day for you to receive the life that Jesus has for you. If you feel that tap on your shoulder, that Jesus is inviting you to come into a relationship with him, just say yes, and you will begin to live out Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 through 30. So come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden. Would you pray with me this evening? Jesus, we're so thankful. We're so thankful that you're in here this place tonight. Father, I just want to pray over my students right now. I want to pray over them. God, there's so many of them that they raised their hands tonight. God, I pray, Lord, that they would receive the real rest, not just a rest that this world has to offer, but a rest that only you can provide. 
God, I pray over the ones that feel anxious and stressed out and overwhelmed. I pray, God, that they would just tap you on the shoulder right now and say, Jesus, would you just spend some time with me? Because they don't realize what's waiting. And what's waiting is you. God, I want to pray over the one right now, God, who's feeling you tapping on the shoulder of their heart. And maybe they're resisting letting you in. I pray, God, that there would not be a single bit of the enemy in this place who's trying to convince them he is not allowed in this place. I pray, God, that they would not have fear, but they would be bold right now and come into a relationship with you. So, Jesus, we thank you. We praise you. Would you look up here with me real quick? Just a few moments, I, I want to invite you to stay where you're at. We're going to respond by, by singing some songs to Jesus. You know, when we worship Jesus, can I tell you what worship is? Worship isn't about the song that we're singing. I, I just am envisioning this, envisioning this right now. Worshiping Jesus is just tapping Jesus on the shoulder and saying, can I spend some time with you? Can I just sing to you, Jesus? That's what worship is. But before we stand up and sing, if tonight you gave your life to Jesus, tonight you want to take a next step, before you stand up and sing, I just want you to take out this next step card. And I just want you to fill it out so that at the end, when we leave, you can put it into uh, the box. And, and here's the thing, whether it's a prayer request, whether it's somebody baptized, serve, we're going to follow up with you. I promise you that. Cool? Cool. Hey. I love you guys. If you made a decision, you want to take the next step, let's fill this out, and then let's stand and let's worship Jesus by tapping him on the shoulder.
your voice tonight. Sing your Savior. sink, Lord, that you help us find that rhythm, uh, that we could walk in the rhythm of your grace and uh, really by the beat of your love. In Jesus' name, amen. You all excited to go out with a fun song? Let's have some no fun. One. Come Let's on. have some fun. Yahweh, he is holy. Come on, y'all.
out there. Wow, I'm really out of breath. Oh, thank you, thank you so much. Before you guys, before, hey, let's not throw stuff, guys. I know you guys are excited. I know you guys are excited. Hey, 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 it's just lock and give me two minutes, not even that. We are so, so glad that you chose to spend your evening with us to come hang out for one night. I wanna remind you guys what one night's all about. It's you guys inviting that one friend that doesn't know Jesus or that one friend that hasn't been in a long time. And why does it matter? Because we're here for one night, we're one family. We're here for one God, one faith. That's what we're here for, guys. And so I hope that you guys had so much fun. Um, and so as a reminder, okay? Yeah, I'm out of breath. As a reminder, hey, if you guys felt led by some sort of step that God was asking to, fill out this next step card. And we wanna know about it. We wanna celebrate with you. We wanna pray for you. But maybe for you guys, shh, I know guys, we're almost done, I promise. Maybe for you, your next step is being called to go to a mission trip. So I know that we here get to serve our city, our neighbors, and we get to know them by name, and people know, need to know about the good news of Jesus. But we have been called, we have been commissioned to spread the gospel to the ends of the earth. And so if you're in high school and you feel like the Lord maybe tapped you, and that's the thing that he tapped you with today, get information, we have packets for you high schoolers. We're going to Mexico to spread the gospels to the ends of the earth. And I know some of you middle schoolers are like, oh, what about me, what about me? Don't you worry. Hey, hey, shh. Guys, what, what we have coming up next for you is a save the date for one conference, okay? And so if you were here for one week, it's the same idea. We wanna spend a few days with you and just encounter Jesus, have you guys grow in your relationship with Jesus. And so grab a card, save the date. More information will be dropping soon, okay? And so last thing, it's our after party time. Before you guys run out of here, you need instructions. All of you guys pick up your trash before you leave, okay? Love you guys. Um, but we're gonna go out these doors and don't go out the front doors, okay? We're gonna go out the side doors and we're gonna have a party. Go hang out, be your inner child, and go hang out on some inflatables.